to the Valley of Grace podcast, where we're helping women create an empowered new chapter of life. And today I have Latrey Wilson here with us, and uh, she's going to begin by telling us her story, and we might get a little bit off topic, but we're still helping women create <laughs> an empowered new chapter of life. We're all, it's all going to tie in. Um, yeah. So... <laughs> La, Latre, you mind by uh, telling the listeners, starting off by telling them your story and my story. Yes. <laughs> my story is a lot. Yes, and then story. if you want to go back into what you were in at some point, <laughs> I want to hear all of it. <laughs> well, my story, I'm going to keep it short because we got a long way to go and I want to make sure I, I answer your questions that you ask. Um, okay. my, my story is um, I'm, I'm originally from the Bay Area. I'm from Oakland, California. I have um, relocated to Houston and um, I'm on a whole new journey in life. I, I left the, I'm still in the education field. I've been in it for like 20 years and um, that's my passion and my love, but I'm, I'm letting you know God is leading me somewhere totally different. So I don't even know where I'm going. I'm just following him. Yes, amen. <laughs> I'm following him. And so, um, my story is uh, last 20 years, I have had like real life experiences and it's no way in the world that I will allow anybody, <laughs> anybody to experience the things that I have gone through. So my story is to, my, the story that I'm telling, our, our story that I want to tell is that you don't have to do this alone. I've done it and I'm, I'm trying to get you to stop. <laughs> I'm trying to get you the help that that we need. So um, the book is titled My Last 20, um, Breaking the Curse to Embrace the Blessing. People tell me it's an easy read. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I wrote it. <laughs> it is an easy read. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I wrote it. So it, does, it doesn't seem like it was easy to me because I wrote it. <laughs> yes. But um, yeah, it's a real easy read. It's for... It's for your, your teenage daughter. It's for you, the, the guy. It's for the mother. It, anybody can read it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say that. Anybody can definitely read the book. And um, it, it's, it's just about breaking cycles and having conversations that, uh, that are difficult to have that have been ignored for so long. That so. is so true. Yes. <laughs> that is so true. And yeah. Yeah, so like we know that unhealth, uh, unconscious, unhealthy relationship patterns keep us stuck, right? So, right. Um, can you tell the audience what some of your unconscious, unhealthy relationship patterns uh, th that you had that finally came to light? I guess to say the scales <laughs> fell off, mm -hmm. like with, uh, with Saul. Yeah, what what were some of those? Oh my goodness, uh, some of the unconscious and unhealthy relationships that I had were um, mental and emotional abuse. I was in those, that in, in, in some of those relationships and it never got physical because I was going to fight you back. Like I, I, yeah. I was going to mm -hmm. fight you back. So right. it wasn't going to get physical. That's mm -hmm. one thing it wasn't going to do. But I allowed the verbal and the emotional because I, I didn't consider that abuse. 
That's it. I, I didn't I didn't consider that abuse at all. And so because I didn't consider that abuse, I um endured that in if not uh, most, if not all relationships that I had, the emotional and the physical abuse. Mm. And it was just goes back to probably what I've seen at home as a child. Yes. And so because that was my norm to, you know, that was my norm, uh, my, my, my norm that I've seen. And so it wasn't the normal behavior that, it that supposed to happen if if, if right. you understand what I'm saying. I understand. And so, and so because of seeing that those type of behaviors at home, I thought it was acceptable. I thought it was right. I thought I thought this is what happens while you're in a relationship. I didn't know how to be a girlfriend. <laughs> I think I said that in my book. I did not know how to be yes. a girlfriend. Mm-hmm. Um, because my mother wasn't a girlfriend. My mother was a wife. So gotcha. My aunts, my aunts were wives, and so um, being a girlfriend didn't see. I, I was, I had models of women being mothers and and wives. Yes, yes. And, and so um, I didn't. I saw, I saw my mom cook for for my dad. I saw my mom, you know taking care of the home, making sure of the kids. So I thought that girlfriends aren't supposed to do this. Wrong. Girlfriends don't supposed to do that. <laughs> See what you're saying? Yes. 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 And so because I was unaware and I did not know the place of a girlfriend and mm-hmm. the responsibility for a girlfriend, mm-hmm. I'm doing wifely duties and I'm I'm not even a wife. I so, see what you're saying. I'm giving I'm giving the milk away for free. For free. Yeah, I see what you're saying. <laughs> Not realizing so you here's the milk on you don't have to pay for it. You want some milk? I'm giving milk away like Oprah. Like for mm. real. I'm giving yeah. it away like Oprah. <laughs> so so, you're it out to the audience. Here you, man, go. Here you go. You know yeah. you want it? Do you want the milk? I, I don't care. And so because I did not um, I didn't see that. I, I was automatically wife material in growth. Mm. Room relation, the abuse, the the mental and the emotional abuse, mm-hmm. and um, it just became a pattern until something something triggered. I think my last my last relationship finally after tw- after 20 years I finally realized this was not healthy you like, know isn't that something that it takes that long and I'm not even talking about like I'm not even harping on you like I said because we're all broke no. okay, myself yeah. you know, even when I think about myself like all of a sudden you just have a come to Jesus moment you just like Mm-mm. Jesus woke me up he woke me up that morning and said we, we stopped and just pulled in this a day Today. today we about to stop this today and so i thank him for stopping the foolishness that day mm-hmm. because, <laughs> okay because, because i see myself now i actually see myself repeating the same cycle of abusive relationship had i stayed yes and i was going to get stuck mhm I, I was actually going to get stuck because it had became so comfortable. Mm-hmm. I did not want to leave. Yeah. Yeah. And so um, God had to make me uncomfortable in the relationship. Mm-hmm. And realize, Wait a minute. I wouldn't even allow this. Why am I allowing this? Mm-hmm. Like I really had to, I had that moment. Wait a minute. This is crazy. Yeah. What? Why wouldn't? Why did not allow this? It was like the things that I did not allow when I was probably, hmm, I say between fourteen and eighteen. Mm-hmm. Those were the years where things just I, I I didn't really I cared about boys, but you right. were not about to be the boss of me, and you're not telling me what to do. And gotcha. so that first boyfriend that really got my ear and turned me on, then mm-hmm. yeah. mm-hmm. ah. after that, no. man, I'm a fool. You know, I, I, I was, <laughs> I, that was the beginning of 
the the fall. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna say that's that a good way to put it. That was the beginning of the fall, and mm. so I was like, "Wait a minute, get back to her. Mm -hmm. Get back to her." Mm -hmm. and so, in order to get back to her, I had to unravel a whole bunch of things. Mm -hmm. And the more I unravel, the more things I found out about myself. Okay, wait a minute. I don't think I want to be in a relationship now. Mm -hmm. The more I unravel, the more I'm, I'm, oh, God, no. I don't want to be in a relationship. So, and, and God just made it a little bit easier. He got, uh, things were um, placed in my, in my way. So I didn't have time for a relationship. Mm -hmm. And so it's three years now. Hmm. Am I lonely? Uh, kind of, sort of. <laughs> kind of, sort of. Yeah. However, I am at peace. Yes, amen. <laughs> I, 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 I am at Ooh. peace. When hmm. I say that I can, I can literally sleep at night, I don't think about, I wonder what he doing. I mm -hmm. wonder what, what, did he eat? I wonder blah, blah, blah. You Like you thinking about him more than you thinking about God. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I was putting him before God, even though I I would never put him before God. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Oh, I know. And, I know. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, and trust so, me. I understand. I understand. I was in, to in a toxic relationship. Yes. yes. Oh, my God. Yes. It was just toxic. Oh, bit toxic after toxic. It was just crazy. And so I just said enough was enough. Yeah. And um I didn't it was it hurt. It it hurt. It didn't hurt physically, it hurt mentally. Mm. And I don't people and, and emotionally. I don't don't I don't think people understand the pain that you feel when you have a breakup. You know um, what? That's so true. That's so we true. don't realize. And we don't want to, we don't want to feel that pain. And so we hop right back in another relationship. To the next one. Yeah. To the next yeah. one. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. now, now dude about to, now he about to show himself even worse. Yes. Can I tell you, I'm going to tell you this quick thing. I dated four narcissists back to back. Mm. I can believe it. I can and believe it. All and they all display narcissistic behavior. The word is thrown out, you know, all willy nilly now. However, the those guys that I dated for the last, you know, and they right. they mimicked, they mimicked. Oh my goodness, they 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 didn't mimic each other. I'm gonna say they didn't mimic each other, so it was hard to see. But right. after I after I came from up under the smoke and yes. I I got out of the clouds and I'm in the air now, right? And I can see, right? And now I can see. <laughs> they all was doing the same thing, like that commercial. I could with they play that song. I can see clearly now. Yeah, girl, if yeah. I could sing, I was singing. I was that. I <laughs> Gonna be a bride. Oh. Right, sunset. <laughs> but you know what? It 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 hurts just thinking. You know, I have, yeah, but it's painful. I know what you mean. <laughs> and that it caused. Mm hmm Yeah. It is a lot. There's a lot of pain. Mm-hmm. Yes. Oh my goodness. Yes, it's like why did I allow those things? And so because of because of that, I just was like uh, enough is enough because I, I'm not I'm mm -hmm. out of control. He was like, let me just put you back together again. So is that like you said, the pain, which is why you're saying it for so long because you're trying to avoid the pain, but yes. but feeling it is inevitable. I mean, you know, either we're gonna continue the unhealthy relationship patterns for the rest of our life or we're going to come out of it. You know what I'm saying? Because yes. we want to be comfortable. We don't want to get to the pain, but there's no progress without pain. Absolutely. You think about it like this. 
when you um when you fall down mm-hmm. um when you fall It's very painful when you first fall, and right. you you may bleed. Now, if you bleed, now you have a wound that needs to heal, and it's a process to that healing. Right. You know, um, it you have to put whatever ointment that you have to put on mm-hmm. to, um, to 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 begin the healing process. Right. And so, during that healing process, the doctor say, "Hey, keep it covered." Yes. Keep keep it covered. Um, clean it, you mm-hmm. know, um, after you clean it, put a Band-Aid back on it so it won't get infected or, mm-hmm. you know, or, or dirty. Okay, yeah. well, maybe you'll forget that you, you know, to keep it clean, mm-hmm. you know. It starts to hurt again. Mm-hmm. What do you do? What do you do? Oh, wait, let me clean it back off and put the medicine back on because... Uh, <laughs> right because it hurts it hurts and and then after the hurts you you, you start seeing it, it scab and all of that and then one day you bump it again oh you, you bump the man that thing hurt oh my goodness you would think that you had just did it for the first time you hit it and you just like Okay. Again. I, do, I don't want to I don't want to bump it again because it was almost healed. It was almost healed. Yeah. So mm. There. And now I've got to start the process all over again. Oh my word. Yes. 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 So after I start that process all over again, what I gotta do? I gotta clean it. I, I gotta care for it. I gotta make sure I sit myself down so I won't harm or, or open the wound all over again. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, now the scab is, is starting to, to come off. But right. don't you pick at that scab because if you pick at the scab and it's not healed, what's going to happen again? Mm-hmm. It's going to open back up oh, and it's going to take forever to heal. And so yeah. you got to start the process all over again. I want to wear my shorts because I, I look, I want to wear my shorts, so I'm gonna to have to get this thing healed up together today. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna I'm gonna follow the process all the way through because I need to look cute for the summer with no scars. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And oh, so what what, is, what do you do again? You go back to the drawing board. Yeah. You get your stuff and you start to clean it again, mm-hmm. and then you you sit you you follow in the steps. You like if I I I got up. That's how I bumped myself the the, the last. Mm-hmm. And that's why it's not healed right now. Let right. me sit myself down. So you <laughs> finally sit yourself down for a little longer. Okay, now it's starting to heal. Now the scab is coming off. Mm-hmm. But it, the, it, the layer of, of skin is coming back. Yes. You know? So if I bump it, it it's, blood is not going to come out. It's just going to be a little painful. hmm a reminder, hey, maybe I still need to chill, you know, keep myself still mm-hmm. a little bit longer so it can completely heal. And so mm-hmm. that's sometimes what we have to do. We have to sit still long enough through the process, the pain, mm-hmm. all of that, just so we can be able to wear our shorts in the summertime. You know what I mean? So oh, we my heal. word, do I know. And you know what? It was um, one thing I was thinking about as you were talking and I was talking before that, too. Um, I know for myself, and I'm quite sure that this probably happens to a lot of women, which is probably why they go back, you know, mm-hmm. uh, and I remember feeling so shameful, you know, and talking to my therapist about it. But when you are in a relationship with a person, with a toxic relationship, you slash, you know, narcissist, somebody that's personality disorder, those type of things, mm-hmm. it creates an unnatural craving inside of your soul to be with that individual. Yeah. You do you know what I'm talking about? Yep. It's very, very much so unnatural. I my my last one. Mm-hmm. My la- my last one, I wanted to be with you. I wanted to be with my last one. Okay. Jesus, he if anyone, if I could lay next to anyone and fall straight to sleep. He was the one that I could just sit, lay next to and just fall asleep. Okay. With no problem. And so um, 
I would want him to just come over just so I can fall asleep up under him. Mm. That's how that's how comfortable he made me feel. Mm. A, a lot of uh, other guys, I couldn't fall asleep. It, you know how you have kids so you don't really right. sleep? Oh, yeah. But, but with him, I could fall asleep. Mm. I could sleep. Okay. He was like, you were snoring, you was out. I was like, what? Yeah. I didn't even know I fell asleep. But wow. anybody else, anybody else, no, I could not fall asleep. I could not. So I wanted to, I wanted to be around him. I I needed him so I could sleep. I would say, yes. can you come over so I could so I can sleep, so I can go to sleep? Mm -hmm. You know, I fall asleep with you. He, mm -hmm. he just be he can just be at my house. And I can yeah. just lay next to him and I can just fall asleep. And so sometimes I wanted him to come over just so I could fall asleep. And that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that unnatural craving mm -hmm. because of the wounds in our own souls that we have not uh, mm -hmm. tackled and have not realized. And I, Absolutely. Remember, I got to the point of making so much progress and I'm just like, man, this is terrible. You know, and when you feel that craving inside of your soul, you try to literally, you unconsciously, you don't realize you just like, okay, I'm just going to numb my whole body out so that I don't feel oh. it. But yeah. numb is not you gotta feel you gotta like they always say you gotta feel to heal yeah you gotta feel to heal you see what i'm saying i you would have to so ashamed of that that i would like literally like numb my whole body out and my yeah. therapist i remember when i mentioned to her about it she said you know what you've come so far i would hate for you to get stuck on this you have to lean in and feel that feeling and yeah. that becomes a drug to you but you don't even realize it yeah you know what that I, I understand that now because I'm I'm more especially because I have I have anxiety. And so mm -hmm. um if it's something that's bothering me or if I don't feel comfortable, the anxiety starts to, you know, play play right. hard. Right. And so um my doctor basically was like, You're gonna have to go through the emotions. You're gonna have to fill up. They're going to be mm -hmm. so uncomfortable. But what you need to do mm -hmm. is, um, this is my, one of my sisters in Christ. They, um, she was like, you're going to have to write that thing out. Yeah. You're going to have to tell God what you're feeling. Mm -hmm. The emotions that you're feeling so you can get past them. And, and so it's a comfortable feeling, isn't it? Yeah, oh, my God. And I didn't learn that until after I moved here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I've only been here for two years. So this is this is new. Yeah. Yeah. This is a new, a mm -hmm. new thing. And, then, yeah. and doing quarantine, especially when writing. When I was writing, writing my book. And right. um, I would get stuck. <laughs> I would get stuck because I didn't want to um I didn't want to go through what I had been through before. Yeah. Now I now I have to write it out. Mm -hmm. I have to replay all of those emotions and I have to feel everything all yeah. over again. And mm -hmm. so I stopped, I literally stopped writing for like probably two or three weeks because I didn't want to feel that pain. Yes, I know. I know what you mean. I, I, I stopped myself. Mm -hmm. I, and um, my publisher, um, she didn't know that I had stopped. I'm like, I'm, I'm writing, I'm still writing. But I had stopped. Like, I stopped. I, I didn't want to, I didn't want to feel the pain. I know what it you was, mean. It, it hurt. It, it hurt. hurt. I know. I had to relive it all over again. Mm -hmm. And something was like, I, so I, I prayed. I said, God, I know you want me to write this book. Yes. I know you want me to write this book. Right. I can't write this book if these emotions are if, if these emotions are, are are following following me and bothering me. Right. So, um if you want this book to be done, I need you to to handle these emotions as I go through. Yes. I, I'm not telling God what to do. Right. I'm 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 just letting him know I can't do it if I have these these roadblocks in front of me. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and I'm letting him know I'm afraid. I'm scared. I don't like what I'm feeling as I ride through. Mm -hmm. And once I did that, I was knocking them out. I was knocking them out. And wow. so when I found, when, 
when I would get to a point where I would go back to that place where I could not write, mm-hmm. I have to stop and say, okay, what, what's wrong? Why am I feeling this way? And I, the story that I'm telling, I don't like the way it makes me feel. It, it's bringing me to a place where it's taking me back to a place where I was hurt. Right. And he, I, all I kept hearing is, I got you. Mm. Just write, just write it out. Just write it out. Just yes. write it out. Yeah. And so writing, it, writing helped me as much as I hate writing. I, like I hate writing. I, I don't, mm-hmm. I don't like it. Right. I was able to write a book. Mm. So, wow. What's crazy is, as much as I hate writing, I have years and years of journals. Isn't that something? Yeah, I have years and years of journals and prayers that I've written mm. that I, I, I don't like writing, but that's my way of healing. That's my way of, of, yeah. of getting rid of those emotions. So now, now I'm quicker to write those feelings and emotions out. And mm. so I'm learning to deal with them a little by little. Mm-hmm. It hurt. It really does hurt still. Oh, yes. It still hurts. And oh, so yeah. I have to just say, Lord, as I'm writing this, it, it hurts. I'm like, I'm telling them, God, this don't feel good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Thank you. It does not feel good. Right. Doesn't feel good at all. And so, um, but I know that you want me. I know that there's a purpose. Yes. So whatever mm-hmm. the purpose is, allow me to get to that place. In the meantime, can you comfort me? Mm-hmm. In the meantime, right? Because I'm on a mission for you, I'm on a mission for you. So I, I, I need to, to do your will. Yes. You do for me, God. Thank you. Amen. I'm not telling you what. I'm not telling him what to do. Right. I'm doing what you want me to do, but there's some stumbling blocks in the road. Mm-hmm. Can you help me out? Please. Yes. Yes. I, I got you. I, I got you. Mm-hmm. And, and so writing has as much as I hate I hate it I hate writing mm-hmm. I, I write I, 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 I write and the things yes. that I hate are the things that God makes me do <laughs> and do you notice too though as you and I noticed this with mine when you write your story and as you're going back and revising and editing and all of that reformatting and etc Mm-hmm. You start noticing things you hadn't even noticed before. You start seeing certain patterns of behavior in certain seasons and what led to that. Oh that my goodness. Before. You, oh my goodness. You you don't I picked up on patterns from past generations. Yes. And I, how I picked up on it, I asked. I asked around. I asked my, mm. I asked my aunt. And I asked. I, I, I talked to my aunts, and they were telling me stories of my grandmother, and um, just listening to the stories. I'm like, what? Wait, wait, wait. Hold up. Hold up. Wait, wait, wait. Go back. I did that. I'm not telling them that I've done that. Right. But I'm identifying within myself. Wait, wait, wait. She did that too? Right. Okay, mm-hmm. if she did that and I'm doing that, mm-hmm. isn't that like a, a cycle of, of repeating yes. Yes. yourself? Yes. From yes. a generation to, mm-hmm. to another generation? Right. Okay, wait, wait. Now, the, the behaviors that I was displaying and the behaviors that I was told about are uh, that I I found out about, wait a minute, wait a mm-hmm. minute. I mimicked the life of my grandmother. Mm. Oh, wait a minute. You mean to tell me that I've been repeating the cycle of, 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 of my grandmother and I was very unaware of? How yes. can that be? Mm-hmm. Why is that? Why did no one tell me? Because they kept things hush hush back in the day. You know, you don't talk about this. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, so since you said 
since you knew it was wrong, you just as bad, you just as guilty as a, as, as, as she is. Mm -hmm. So you wanted me to repeat the same cycle? How dare you? So because I found, I started to find out, and I'm like, wait a minute, there's a generation behind me. I, I, I do not want them to repeat the same thing that I did. Right. We we about to fix this. We oh fix yeah. This. Mm -hmm. We really we really about to fix this right now because if I don't say anything, that means I'm okay with the behavior. That was okay with the behavior. That was okay with the behavior. That was okay yes. with the behavior. Yes. Generations, generations yes. after generations. Right. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. It's yes. time to have those conversations. It's time to talk about the uncle who raped the niece. It's time yes. to talk about. Yes. It's time to have those conversations. The uncomfortable we, ones. Yep. Uncomfortable ones. Until mm -hmm. we don't. Until we don't. We are bound to com to repeat the same cycle all over and over again until somebody say, "I've had enough." We about to stop this. We about to talk about this. And so that's where I come in mm -hmm. and, and rope it. Yes. Because there's no way in the world that I would want anyone to repeat the same. No, absolutely not. No, I know what you mean. Yes. The only way we stop it is we talk about it. We, we talk, talk about, about it. it. Right. Have those passing that trauma on. Yeah. Why would you want to pass it on? And we don't, but you know what? A lot of times they don't realize it, and especially when it comes to uh, just keeping it real when it comes to Black families. Definitely, definitely. You know yeah. I mean, no, you, know? you keep that. You keep that a secret. You don't. You don't tell Big Mama secret. Because right. if you tell Big Mama secret, you don't. You don't mess up the whole family dynamic. No, there you go. No, yeah. No, we yeah. about to tell Big Mama secrets because if we don't tell big mama secrets we gonna have we gonna have grandkids we're gonna have kids have kids at 13 and 14 years old mm -hmm. we're gonna have uh uncles and aunties being molested or molesting the nieces and nephews and cousins and stuff like that right. you know we're gonna we're gonna continue to have the drug issues that we have in our life we're gonna continue to have problem uh problematic behavior within our families if we do not if we do not speak up and, and yeah. say what's going on, calling them out. And mm -hmm. whoever, who, whoever is telling some, I had to listen. Right. You know, I, I, I listened. And when I listened, I learned a lot. You sure I do. A lot. You I sure do. A lot from my, I learned a lot from my grandmother, my grandmother, my godmother, and the women of, of, of the church that I went to when I was a kid. Me too. I would sit. I would sit and, and watch. Yeah, you sit and watch and listen, and you yeah. pretend like you're not listening because you know kids, you don't come and sit and hang out with the adults. I would purposely get in trouble just so I could sit next to them, just so I could, I could watch them. I would sit <laughs> next to my grandmother just so I could watch. I'm not being nosy mm -hmm. in that conversation. I just want to. I just want to watch. Right. You learned a lot from watching. You did. You did. Because even when I mentioned stuff to my mother today, she said, Tina, you remember that? I said, Mom, I remember a lot of stuff. You'd be surprised at what I remember. It was, it was until you opened your mouth, that's when you, you stopped learning. Yes. When you opened your mouth, that's when you stopped learning. Mm -hmm. So when I was quiet, I learned how to be classy. I learned how to walk in a place where where I'm going to get everybody's attention without saying a word. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I was among some women that just, they competed with each other, but they did not compete with each other. Yes. You know, yes. they did not, that that Sunday event that, that's going to happen, the pastors and wives uh, appreciation, they're mm -hmm. going to come dressed. They, yes. they ain't going to tell you what they're wearing. They're going to walk in. And, and you go, oh, wait a minute, sister, so-and-so came, look at her. Oh, and they ain't talking about you, in no. a, you know, in a negative way. No. They, they giving you the ultimate respect because you done pulled it off. Now you bad. There now you I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to compete with sister so-and-so on her, on her appreciation day next 
next year. You know what I mean? And right. So it that was kind of thing. thing. Like that. You know, it was kind yeah, of Yeah, it was like unspoken. That. Yes. Unspoken. And they would they would speak to each other and they would check them. Girl, you know you were wrong for doing that. <laughs> You know you was now you now you know you was wrong. And they wouldn't wait until they left. They're gonna check you right then. You know you wrong right for saying that. Yes. Why you do that to her? Right. Go and fix that. Yeah. And so I I I need us to get back there, you know, because yeah. that's where we were we were starting to see the change. And then all of a sudden all of a sudden, we we done fell back. And girl, he did. She talking about you. I wouldn't mess with her. Leave her alone. And blah blah. Don't be telling my business. Don't right. be telling everybody what's going on in my life. Well, obviously, there's something going on in your life that you shouldn't be doing. And right. you don't want nobody in your life. That's true. Yeah. So much, so much for me.